Diarrhea is one of the symptoms for IBD and its severity is dependent on the location and extent of inflammation within your gastrointestinal tract. And I'm sure we've all been there rushing to the loo during the day or night, not only due to your IBD, but because of a dodgy kebab you've had the previous night. So what's the best way to manage when diarrhea hits? Well, stay tuned because that is exactly what I'll be discussing in today's video. Welcome back to my channel, the only place of Crohn's and colitis tips, tricks and information. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified every time I post a video. And if you want to join the community of people who receive tips and tricks on living with Crohn's and colitis, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter by visiting the link in the description box below. Now, diarrhea is the term given to the increased amount of volume or frequency of the passing of loose or liquid stools in a rapid fashion, of which the severity of it can be an indication of disease activity. Now, inflammation seen in IBD can cause damage to the epithelial and mucosal structure of the intestines, which impedes not only absorption of food, but water and solute transportation. Now, aside from IBD, there are other causes of diarrhea, such as stress, medications, and even the foods we eat. One way of managing diarrhea, especially if you find it hits when you are traveling, is to have an emergency travel kit with spare underwear, baby wipes, and one other key item I personally never leave the house with, and I mention this in this video here, which you can find the link in the description box below. Now, some people may find that certain foods can cause an upset tummy, by causing the onset of diarrhea as some foods which are spicy or high in fiber can cause laxative effects. Now one way to identify foods that can bring on these symptoms is by keeping a food diary and noting down what you ate, the time you ate, how much you ate and what symptoms you experienced later. This is one way in which people with IBD can actually identify their trigger foods, but also can be used by everybody if you feel certain foods are not agreeing with you. I go more into this in this video here and you can find the link to that in the description box below. Now by identifying these foods, you can cut them out of your diet, which will hopefully reduce the symptoms you experience. However, it is best to use this method under the supervision of a qualified dietitian. There is also a chance that you could be sensitive to gluten or even lactose intolerant. Now, gluten is a type of protein that is found in grains, and if you are sensitive to it, you could have celiac disease, where your immune system reacts to the gluten and brings on your symptoms. Now, people with IBD can also be sensitive to gluten, and so going on a gluten-free diet, supervised by your doctors and dietitians, can help alleviate the symptoms of diarrhea, bloating, and even stomach pains. Now, additionally to diet, lactose intolerance is seen in the general population as well as in people People with IBD and so people who have this intolerance tend to avoid dairy products. Now this is because dairy products contain the sugar called lactose and if you are lactose intolerant you lack the enzyme called lactase which is needed to break lactose down and if you don't have this enzyme this causes lactose to remain in your gut where it is fermented by bacteria in your large intestine which a byproduct of this fermentation is the release of gas which can cause your symptoms of bloating and diarrhea. One of the most important things to do if you are suffering from diarrhea is to stay hydrated. Now this is because diarrhea can cause dehydration and the loss of electrolytes. And so you may notice you can get a dry mouth or throat and feel thirsty quite a lot. Try and stay away from caffeinated drinks as these can contribute to dehydration. You can also try taking some anti-diarrheal medications which helps firm up stools and reduce the amount of times you need to go to the loo. But it's important to discuss this with your doctor as some over-the-counter medications may not be suitable for you if you have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis and are on other medications as well. Now check out these videos for more useful tips, tricks and information on Crohn's and colitis. Hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I post a video as well as leaving a like and a comment if you enjoyed this and I can't wait to see you all in the next episode.